we've got this really busy entrance to our church. I mean, every day of the week. There's a circle drive on both both main entrances to our church, the way it's laid out. On, on one main entrance, there's kind of a steeple and we've got a, a cross, like lots of churches at the top. And this kind of busy intersection of, of our church, this other side, we got a circle drive and there's a, this old wooden cross. I, I see it coming and going throughout the year, you know, coming from the admin building over to the worship center and we pass by, you pass by crosses. Maybe you see them, maybe you wear them. Uh, the cross is the central kind of like iconic image of our faith because of its, of its importance. I mean, the, the, the cross is everything. It, it was the culmination of kind of really all, all of the work that God did to, to, to bring us back to him. And so uh, John records for us like the important things that happen at the cross. I mean, there, there are these sayings that Jesus really, um, he, there's so much business that he takes care of really at the cross. There's really kind of a list of sayings. I, Maybe you know some of them. Maybe maybe you know all of them as I kind of share them with you here. One of the first thing he says is to the people who are literally like killing him on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. Like They, they don't know what they're doing. I mean, these are the guys who are keeping the crowd back and I mean, they're just performing an execution. It's really kind of another day on the job from their perspective. They're trained to do this. And Jesus is thinking about them the moment he's like, Father, forgive them. They, they don't understand this moment yet. They will in time. The, the next thing he says to it's a criminal hanging next to him, the guy, the guys hanging next to them, next to Jesus, they, they deserve to die. Jesus says to one of them who hears who Jesus is and believes that he's the son of God in that moment, Jesus looks at him and says, you're going to be with me in paradise today. That's the second of just some of the incredible things that happen on the cross. The next is uh, he takes care of the business of, you know, last words, family words, caring for his mom. Uh, he says, uh, woman, behold your son. She, she's there with an, an apostle and John, and he looks at John and says, uh, behold, this is this is your mom now. Like, like take care of my mom. She's now your mom. Um, you're not losing a son today. You're, you're, you're gaining one. Um, and Jesus understands that he's not really going away. Um, and so... He takes care of that business, uh, taking care of his mom. You know, the, the next thing he says is, he sings, this is the first part of a long, a line of a song. You know, uh, Psalm 22, famous song. Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some folks understand that to be like, Jesus is like, God, what are you doing? And that's not what he's doing. He's, you know, he's saying the first part of a song and lots of people would remember that in that, song written hundreds of years before that moment on the cross, that, that song talks about Jesus's clothes being divided. It foretells that. That's crazy. It, it tells that he's going to be pierced. And it's almost like Jesus is saying, hey, you remember this famous song? Here it is. That song was written for this moment in time. That's, that's one of the things that happened in this. It wasn't a quick moment. There were hours of him being nailed to a tree and people witnessing the moment, people witnessing his gruesome death, a, a real, like, he died on that tree. And all of these things were said. One of the last things he said was, I'm, I'm thirsty. And they, they gave Jesus uh, a nasty drink. They didn't bring him like fresh, cool water, you know, like a, a vinegar cleansing water. It was, just, it was really almost like a, a mean thing. So what, what happened, what they gave him there. What comes after that is uh, what Charles Spurgeon says. Charles Spurgeon says, when Jesus says, it is finished, he says, it's an ocean of meaning in one drop of language. I, I mean, all of humanity's experiences before the cross and all that will ever come after the cross hang on really one Greek word, to die, which has to be translated into a few English words for us to get the, just a portion of the gravity of what he's saying. It, 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 the work is done. I mean, so much is wrapped up in those words. It is finally done, completed, finished. No one can add to what Jesus has done. All of Christ's human experience is now finished. Uh, all of the work that has to happen for us to have uh, the covering of the perfect lamb and salvation, that work is finished. There, 
There are all of these things wrapped up into the idea of Christ saying, it's done. His obedience to the Father is now finished. The very thing that you and I are counting on and need so much, which is his grace and blood covering is finished. At the cross, the blood of Christ runs perfectly in both directions on a timeline. It runs forever backwards and it runs forever into the future. Jesus was there at the beginning of creation and I believe all of humanity flashed before his eyes in that moment. Jesus in Genesis chapter two, verses one through three, he looked at the creation of his hands and he looked at the world created and he said, it's done, it's finished. He, he had created the world and that work was finished. It was perfect. And for the next thousands and thousands of years, humanity would drift away from him because of sin. And it was at this moment on the cross that Jesus would say these words, salvation, now salvation is finished. He finished creation in Genesis, but it is in John chapter nine, verse 30, where the work bringing us back to him is truly finished. The finality of that is what we celebrate this weekend. Jesus truly paid it all. Nothing can be added to his work because nothing is needed to be added to his work. The work of our redemption is truly finished.